So my name is Jason Lawner. This is Yoga for Alignment, which is kind of my shtick, the alignment stuff, yoga too. And, um, and so this class is going to be just kind of, kind of, kind of centered or focused on like this part of ourselves. So like in yoga, the heart chakra, um, it's it's the part of us that is you know, like the personal, it's the you, it's the, it's the ego, it's, and there's always this funny conversation in, in yoga, in a lot of the Eastern spirituality about how, um, you know, the ego is a bad thing, or this kind of, yeah, like something that we're trying to transcend, but there's, if you think about ego in balance, your ego becomes you know, a really important tool um, to, to really like hold yourself accountable, to hold yourself in the right way. So, you know, where your ego can either like bring you up or pull you down, what we're after is the way that if we line ourselves up, like spirit and the universe can flow through us in a more harmonious way. And that's the kind of point of doing the practice, of, mo of moving and, and getting into ourselves, is it's not to like crush the parts of us that make us unique, that make us us, but it's to shape that so we are the most skillful version of ourselves that we can be. Yoga should enhance like all your uniqueness, all your individuality and hopefully get rid of those times when we feel, you know, better than and worse than others. So, sit up tall, close your eyes. Just give yourself a couple breaths to land, to settle, to try to be still. So in that, in that focus, in that theme, there's this affirmation of self. That whether you're feeling good, that you're feeling centered, or you're having a bad day, you're in a little bit of a funk, that you need a reminder. You remind yourself, you bring into an attitude that we want to really find where that optimal person is. We want to glorify the great beings that we are. Not saying that everything is perfect, that we do everything right, but it's you start from this life-affirmed, self-affirmed reminder. And let that inform a taller seat, better posture, and a more relaxed breath. Bring your hands together right in front of your heart and join me as we sing. Three ohms, one round of the invocation, and then an ohm at the end. Take a deep breath. Oh, 
into your heart. You can bow and release your hands, open your eyes, and you come on up. Let's go uh, hands and knees all fours. And then spread your fingers wide, grip the mat, take a few breaths just to move around to check in with good strength in your fingers and your hands. That transfers up your forearms, but a really kind of balanced strength where strength in the places you need to be strong, try to settle in the rest, make your face a little softer, your eyes more relaxed, and then just start changing the hand position, working through all of them. So all the way out, you can turn the hands back in. And then back of the hands down on the mat, pressing your fingernails down. Good. And then when you're ready, downward facing dog. So take a, a few breaths, uh, you know, to move around here in this pose. Any way that feels good. It can be pedaling your legs out, shifting the weight from hand to hand or foot to foot. And even the way you approach tightness, you know, discomfort, it, it's this, it can be this really like clear reflection of that attitude. So, you know, be gentle, be patient. It does take some time. And then from down dog, take your right leg up to the sky. Keep the toes pointing down towards the mat and push the mat away as you stretch the arms, stretch back through the, that lifted leg. And keeping your glutes lifted, you can try to straighten even through the bottom leg. Maybe you're doing little pulses, so you're prioritizing the length in your spine. Good, and then step all the way forward into a lunge. Come on up. Once you're placed, you can take the arms up to the sky and lift and open. One of these things of like kind of heart center and, and this, you know, self and this ego is you'll get, it's, there's this tendency to want to crank the chest open a little too much. So even as you stretch, and these first couple, just think more vertical. Think more about the back of your waist stretching, less about, you know, opening up so much through the front body. In essence, what you're doing is you're trying to balance the way you hold the pose. It should have a softening quality. And then bring the hands back to the floor, step all the way back to downward dog. Take the left leg up on the next breath. And again, the standing leg can bend a little bit. Lifted toes point down. Use your arms to send your weight back into your legs even more. Keep your glutes lifted. And you can play with straightening your, your standing leg. When you, when you start to bump into like, ooh, that's tight or that's intense, see if you can move deeper on an exhale. Again, just for the quality that it encourages 
in your whole system. Nice. And then big step forward lunge. Come on up. Another element is, is using your eyes a little bit less. As if if you look forward or even down, but still stretch super tall, the feeling of the pose can be a little bit different. Again, still do all the things you know. Make your legs strong, press your feet heavy into the floor, but go vertical through the stretch. Make the back of the shoulder blades rise up. And then hands to the mat, all the way back, downward facing dog. On the inhale, forward to plank position, that top of a push-up. Puff into your mid and upper back, pushing down through the arms. And then down all the way on the exhale to the floor. Gentle cobra as you come on up. See if even here you can move more shoulders into the back body, breath into the back side of your lungs. You know, kind of easy on these first couple. And then downward dog. Bend your knees, walk or jump to the front of your mat. Exhale as you fold down. Inhale, partially lift your chest. You get long through the spine. Keep your legs firm. Bow down as you exhale. Filling into the back body as you inhale. Again, lengthen halfway. And exhale, bow. Push your feet down. Come all the way up to stand. Sweeping your arms overhead at the top. And again, stretching a little bit more full through the back of the ribs through the back of the arms. Hold the right arm, shift to the side. And again, it's like all the strength in your legs, but even, you know, the abs are, or the waistline is all supporting. Think if you could actually use your ab muscles a little to move the bottom ribs back a little more, to feel into those low back muscles. And it's all supportive. Come back up and switch. And anything you do in the spine, the legs have to already be steady. So you got to be pretty firm in the legs. You could imagine like you were, you know, squeezing a block together or just keep your legs really tight. Good. And then stand back up tall. Bring the arms down by the sides. Bend your knees and squat. So look down at first. Take your hips back. To draw your belly in. And then keep the eyes a little gentle as you lift your chest and open. You can do, you know, as deep of a pose as you want. You could take the arms out by your sides, over your head. But this kind of tempering way that if you relax your eyelids, so your bottom eyelid feels like it gets a little bigger, how it can change the feedback in your system. Keep reaching down through your legs, up through your arms, and then exhale, fold forward, touch the floor. Take your right hand to the sky and twist. Look first with your heart, with your chest, then your eyes can follow. Good. Take the hand to the floor and switch. And yeah, let the knees bend as they want to. So you open up, like imagine your eyes were right in the center of your chest and that's, that's the most important part. Great. And then hands to the floor, step back to downward facing dog. Take your right leg up to the sky. And then all the way forward, lunge. Find your balance, come on up. It's like this part of us. If you even imagine that you slid your weight, your bottom ribs back a little, 
but still lift the entire rib cage up off of your legs. Again, and you can look up towards your hands. Just be aware of the, the tendency that for that to want to change the way the pose feels, the tendency that it has to harden us. Can you still drive through your legs? And then you do start to lean back. You do start to lift your chest up, but keeping a fullness on the back of your waist as you do. Good. Stay there. Grab your left wrist. So again, waistline back. And it's just a little gentle side stretch. You can pull on the arm. You can lean back a little. Trying to traction the left side of your belly to try to open the left side of your torso. Good. And then come down. Take your left hand to the floor, right hand to the sky, and twist. So now you're seeing, like, can you do that same kind of traction feeling on the top side or the right side of your torso as you lean back a little more. You can even always touch your bottom ribs and just kind of coax them back as you then take your shoulders back, as you then press your head back a little more. Beautiful. Take the hands to the floor, step back to downward dog. And a very full back body as you inhale and roll to plank pose. Keep your waistline lifting even as you lower down Chaturanga all the way to the ground, Cobra or Upward Dog. It's, even as you go deeper, try to keep it you know, a little softer in that mid-low back. And then Downward Dog, hips back, lift back up. Yeah, and there's all kinds of great you know, variations and versions that might feel better to you. Take your left leg up to the sky. Step it all the way forward, lunge, and work your way up. That's one of the silly ones in yoga, you know. People do a pose and like, oh, I can't do that, or you got an injury, or you're, you're tight. And people get so, you know, like caught up in the, in, the, in the performance of the poses. And they're fun. But it's not all about that. Waistline back, lift and lengthen. As you try to stretch up taller, just make sure the back of your waist is moving with you. And then take hold of your right wrist. It's just like a subtlety. And the more you keep that shifting back in the torso, the more you can catch your hip flexor and kind of stretch even back through your, your back leg. So big, big, spacious right side body. Good. And then bring the right hand now to the floor, left arm to the sky, and twist. You can start there, but you can absolutely walk your hands more and more to the right as you lean back as you open up. Making sure, you know, this is one of those kind of like, I want to go deeper. The self, when it gets a little off, will crank your hand back. Try not to. So you take your shoulders back so you always see where your hands are. Good. And then touch the floor and step back. Down dog. Optional, you can go forward plank pose and move through that vinyasa or just take a few breaths as you hold downward dog. Yeah, John. Guys look good. Awesome. And then bend your knees back to the front of your mat. Walk or jump. Exhale, fold. Ground your feet. Lift your chest back up to stand. And yeah, take that stretch at the top again. S softer front body, fuller stretch. Arms back down. Bend your knees, squat again. You have the option, if you want to go a little narrower, you can, with your feet. Quiet your toes on the ground so they're, they're gripping, they're firm, but, you know, I mean, I do it too. Like, feet want to dance and wobble and fidget. So you, you 
you let your mind help to stay focused to remind the feet of that. Take your hips back and lift your chest. And again, the arms could come up and they can go to any position. The shape still is just as full, but again, you know, you look down, to me it does a lot. It's like really tempers that kind of self-effort, efforting feeling that can get a little firm, that can get a little out of whack. Good. Dive forward as you exhale. Lift your chest and then left foot back, long lunge. Take your back knee to the floor. Keep your back toes tucked under so you have some strength in your back leg to drag it forward and walk your hands out in front of you. Try to do this on fingertips so that you are making your legs work because if you relax your legs it doesn't feel good to be on your fingers. But if you work your legs, drag them together, you make your upper body a little bit lighter. Ridge tops is fine. It's just this idea of like you're not just like hanging out in your arms. You're working through your legs. Again, the back knee, the front foot, draw towards each other helping to lift your back hip and then shift your hips to the right push down trying to sit deeper into this trying to stretch the legs away from each other good And then walk your hands back. So shift back. So now you're stacking your knee over your ankle and twisting over the right leg with the left arm first. You cross in, place your hands and twist. You can keep your back knee down the whole time. You could lift the knee off the mat if you feel balanced enough to. For a lot of reasons, you know, if you look up, your balance suffers more it's a great challenge if you want to do that. But again, you can always just really look at the floor or even more wherever you look. Look softly. Look almost lovingly. Like, like if you hate a pose, you, you kind of trick the mind to be in a better attitude, a better frame of mind. Nice job. Bring the hands to the floor. Switch the legs. So back knee down. Back toes tucked under. Start to hug your legs together so you get this lift at first. And then take your hands out in front of you. Keeping the back knee especially dragging forward. Shift into the left leg a little to the left and drive your legs down and apart. Give yourself that gift of your breath to go slow, to really breathe deeply. Because that's where a lot of the releases happen that are not so much physical. Yeah, the physical stuff works too, but you know, a really full breath can de-stress us, can make us feel so much better. Good. Walk your hands back, and then from that low stretch, you should be in, a, in basically the setup. You just have to shift yourself back till your front knee is over your ankle, and you twist to the left. Back knee could lift up. See if you can puff your waistline up, if you can breathe more into the back of your waist. And still use your eyes, just soften their intensity. Good work, guys. Hands back to the floor, back to downward facing dog.
So come down to hands and knees, all fours. We're gonna do this little like super good like shoulder impingement drill. It's a push up, I know, but it's a push up. They call it like a push up plus. So it's this is the plus is this ability to press down through the shoulders. You guys know this well, but when you push down, you turn your head a little side to side, making sure you're not catching anything in the neck. So you do that first, then to add the push up part of it, I recommend the knees down. Shift forward more, press down, and then as you bend your elbows a little, do a little bit of a push up at first, and then back up straight. Protract in the upper back, and then you can try it again. I'll show you, you know, it can get, it can get towards something like this. The neck is always relaxed. Being on your knees helps you to stay continuing to go forward so that your elbows stack right over your wrists. I mean, it's doable with your knees up too. It's just, it's a hard enough push up. One of the, one of the things to think about as you go back up, Instead of like oh, bearing down and pushing, imagine like you're almost like a balloon that you could, instead of pushing the ground away, you're lifting your waist away from the ground. I'm not saying that's gonna make it feel super easy. It just shifts where you put the focus and the intensity in this. Yeah, good. You can take a child's pose whenever you need to. Yeah. The idea is like keep going forward as you go down. Because there's, there's a limit to how, you know, you're, you'll keep going forward and it'll help stack your wrists right under your elbows. Awesome. I know, yeah. And if the wrists are going like, that's a lot of bend in the wrist. You can make little circles. You could also just press down. This is a nice thing to do here. And again, it's not like I'm forcing my wrist to bend. I'm pressing the fingernails down so that I'm toning these muscles as they get stretched. It should feel good to do that. Like it shouldn't be painful to do that. Okay. All right, back to downward facing dog from there. Take your right leg up to the sky. Step forward into warrior two pose. And make your way on up. When you do this warrior two, you know, very lateral. So you are turning your torso as, as like, so that you are as square to that left, facing the left side of your mat or the room as you can be. And then keep that position, take your right arm up to the sky and lean back. There are different ways to do this pose. I think, yeah, super, super lateral and even very full on the left side, the back side of your torso, even as you stretch, yeah. Beautiful, come back to warrior. So now it's the other side as you come down side angle pose. Keep your top side full as well as the bottom side. Turn the top arm so the palm faces over your head and then stretch that arm overhead, elongating your side body even more. You're welcome to take the bottom hand down to the floor. And that it's, again, your right side body that can tend to get crunched a little bit. You can make a lot of change there, a lot of sensation change by breathing, by thinking about that side body, imagining you're pulling your breath more into the right lung. Good job, take the hands to the floor, step back to downward dog. 
Take a moment if you want to pass through the vinyasa, you can do that. Or just a, a nice gentle breath. Nice look. Good. And then left leg to the sky. Warrior two. Step forward. Come on up. It's the back arm that gets forgotten. We do warrior two. And generally, you know, your left arm, your front arm is a lot more thought about. But, you know, whether you look or not at the back arm, but position it give equal strength and stretch through both arms and make it so that when you press your feet down and stand tall that back side of the waist the whole rib cage flows up more evenly and then lean back take the left arm to the sky hold that stretch for reverse warrior and then all the way back warrior two into side angle pose so elbow comes down, other arm up. Big full torso, turn the palm to face overhead in that top arm. And reach that arm over your head. Keep rotating the palm down as you get the arm more and more over your head. But so it really affects the shoulder as much as possible. Wherever you look, soft eyes, smooth breath, pressing down with your feet like the hips will lift as you do more of that. Good. And then hands back to the floor, back to downward facing dog. Good. Take the left leg to the sky. So forward for triangle pose. Step the right foot to the front of your mat. Spin your back foot down and you can straighten right into it. Let's actually come up so you really kind of help encourage this to stay lifted. So it's the underside of you that wants to kind of collapse. Take your right arm out in front of you, but making sure as we slide forward, it's not like you're just dropping your hips but you're really actively pushing and reaching out through your right arm, keeping the right waistline, right rib cage lifted. Then go down, triangle pose. And the bottom hand, it just falls right below your shoulder, wherever that is. You can touch a block, you can touch your... Blocks or, or floor is best, but don't try to grab your foot or do something just like let the hand be where it wants to fall and mirror that in the top arm. Again, expand the torso with your breath. Shift your head, your shoulders back. Good. And then look down at the mat. Step forward for half moon pose. You could use a block underneath your hands. but keeping that right top of the right hip pressing back, lengthen and move your right shoulder, your bottom shoulder more forward as you turn open from the left side of your chest, from the bottom side is where you create that twist. Let the top side be soft. Bring the hands down to the floor, lift your back leg up high. And the exhale, stretch through both legs, down through the bottom foot, up through the top leg. Good. And then placing your hands, you could step, jump, you could take a few little hops to make your way back to down dog. A vinyasa if you want.
and then take your left leg to the sky. Step forward, warrior two. So let's do warrior two into triangle legs, just so you get a ballpark on your stance. You can go ahead and straighten the leg right when you get there, but you know, your wide stance. Left foot forward, yeah. Left foot, isn't it left foot forward? Yeah. Ah. Did you do it that way? I trust you? Perfect. You should be on the opposite side, yeah. Cool, all right. Full torso, this is what happens with like camera and home. Re so reach forward with your, your front arm, but make sure it's stronger in the legs as you go down. I almost hesitate to teach things kind of like that because so many people will just collapse on their hamstring. Left hand towards the floor for triangle, right arm up to the sky. Yep, you're absolutely right. I on the right side. And the way you weight your pelvis and you push it down can also help that elongation through the spine. So look down to the mat, step forward for half moon pose. Yeah, bring a block if you need to. So the bottom leg, press that thigh back as you turn open as you, sh as you reach the sh chest and shoulders away from your legs. And always in twisting poses, the chest. Think of the eyes are in the chest. Good. Bring the hands down to the floor, standing splits. Push the mat away as you, as you stretch your legs apart. Yeah, when does it get like too tight, too effortful? Play nice. Hands to the mat, walk, jump, or take a, yeah, take a couple hops to down dog. Good. All right, bring your knees to the mat. Bring your forearms down to the mat. In one of two positions, the hands can touch and the wrists press down in that variation or the forearms are parallel, hands are separated. Elbows are always right underneath your shoulders in whatever version you do. Similar to that little push-up thing we did, start on your knees, push the mat away. So that's the plus part, rounding the shoulder blades. Then keep that, take your knees off the floor, and walk yourself in. So that plus part, that trying to stay really active in the shoulders without you know, shrugging into your neck without tensing your neck. So if you turn your head side to side a little bit, you can see if there's, you know, tension is wanting to creep in. And then try walking forward a little more. So continuing to push the mat away and pushing your chest back towards your legs. When it gets a little tense, come down and rest, child's pose. And go back to your breath. Good. So we'll give you a, I'll give you a few more drills on this. If you want to try doing these on the wall, you can do this on the wall. You just go like to the nearest little spot that you can find. 
but some of the variations could look like this. When you walk in, again, the actions in the shoulders, I think, are the most important thing before you start, you know, loading the shoulder joint more. So you got to make sure you can keep the shoulders active and positioned. But then you can lift the leg. You could even, you know, if you're against a wall, you can start to kick up towards the wall or even doing just little gentle hops like this. You go up, you can come back down, go up, you can come back down. Try without driving yourself too, too much into tension and rest when you need to. There you go. So if you're doing the jumps, a great drill is just, can you land really lightly? Like the most basic jump drill that I, I like is like you bend one, the, the, stand, the bottom leg, you jump and you try to land very soft, very light with as little movement in the top leg. So top leg stays really straight bottom leg is like a spring because again it's not your feet that you're throwing up to get into the pose it's your hips that's what will get you up to into the pose so if you actually slow your feet down you'll be able to help move the heavier part of you where your hips is good nice guys Oh my God, good save. So far away, can't save people if they fall. Okay, come back to, make your way back to child's pose when you're ready. It can be right down the center. You can walk hands to one side and the other side, elongating the side body. You can take the stretch, but you know, just like a nice little reset of a pose. So my favorite thigh stretch, you guys are lucky at, that these brick walls are not conducive to putting your feet up on the wall. I know you know my favorite thigh stretch. I'm sure you could guess. We can't do it. I think it would just like grit your toenails off. Okay, come back up. Uh, so hands and knees all fours. So we're doing this thigh stretch instead. Right foot forward lunge. I'll face you. And then left hand grabs back foot. Your right hand can be down on the mat. Your elbow forearm could be up on the knee, or you can come taller. Make sure you're leaning forward enough in the legs so you're not on the kneecap. You're actually, because if you're here, ow, that hurts like crazy. But if you get here, if you shift forward, and even a little like rolling to the inside edge of the quad, outside edge, will shift where you feel the stretch. Push your legs down, see if you can sit up be constantly this game of lunging forward into it. Good. If you feel good and low there, you can try to rise up tall through the chest, maybe even taking your right arm up to the sky. One more breath and then we're gonna switch. It's always like asking people to do more after they've been in a thigh stretch for a couple breaths. All right, touch the mat, switch your legs. I know, thigh stretches hurt. Good, so left foot forward, bend the back knee, and with your right hand, reach back to hold the foot. So it's a squared thigh stretch. But as I said before, keep your front knee like that, steady and strong. 
but you can roll a little through the back, inner thigh, outer thigh, hitting different parts of the quad that feel tight. Never works really well if to go deeper. If you just like pull on your back foot, it doesn't work well. Your whole system will be like, nope. And there's like a, a tightening in the muscles. There really has to be this signal of like letting go, of cooling down, of letting circulation in there, of untangling knots, rather than like pulling things tighter into knots. Again, as your hips start to be able to press to the floor, then try to sit up taller through the spine, you could take your left arm up, maybe. Yeah, that's it. When you sit deep or go on an exhale, let the exhale be like a surrendering into more depth. Beautiful. Awesome. Downward facing dog. Those look great. And then lift your right leg up to the sky. Bend the knee this time. Open the hips up, warrior, I mean, into that twisted dog pose here. And then pigeon pose, bring the knee forward. Once you're there, draw your knees together. See if you can sit up a little taller. And this funny way of, if you look down at first, first the legs are strong, but you just imagine waistline fills back, ribs fill back. So back and then up. Your hands can come off the mat. You can stretch and even curl deeper into a back bend, but really to get the deeper, more balanced pose, this whole thing has to slide back more than you just crank up. Good, take the hands to the floor, down onto your forearms or straight arms for the fold. Reaching your hips down and back through that back leg dragging the belly forward. Keep your left forearm down on the mat Turn your chest to the right, so you're twisting to the right. Your right arm could go up to the sky. It could also, that free arm, that lifted arm, you could push the hips down, the thigh down a little bit. But it's twofold. The more you root into the ground, the more you're coaxing length through the rest of the spine. Good. Bring the hands to the floor. Make your way back. Downward dog. Take your left leg up to the sky. Bend the knee. Twist the hips open. And then pigeon pose, bring the knee all the way forward. You can have your front foot more in your groin, but keep your knee wide. That's actually a good position to be in like that. And then pulling your legs together. And as it's a signal when you, when you lower your head to fill into the back of your body first. And then, so like you are literally leaning more weight into your back leg. So you got to pull a little more with your back knee. Then you can rise up. You could take the arms to the sky. 
you could lean back into this even a little deeper. Good. Awesome. Take the hands down to the floor, bow, either forearms or straight arms, whatever feels best for you. And as you go deeper, your back knee can even slide further towards the back of your mat. But look for the settling of your breath. The longer you're here, yeah, the breath should, the breath body should relax in many ways more. Keeping your right arm down on the mat this time, turn to the left. And you can take the arm up, push the hips down, all of those sorts of things. Just slowing down, even if you, know, if you do take your arm up, you know, making that be one of the, like, the last parts that move, that it's really your shoulder, it's really your torso, that are opening and then the arm just be, just becomes an extension out from that instead of like the very common way a lot of us we move our hand and we pull open from our hands it doesn't feel as good awesome take the hands back down step back downward dog And then make your way down to lay on your back. You can have your head facing either direction, whatever you like. Bend your knees, place your feet for bridge pose. Press the butt down so the, the back and ribs lift, but draw your belly in so you temper that. You attenuate how much that that gets cranked open and then lift your hips like you know using the arms and the head to press down to activate the muscles in the back body to drive this pose deeper from strength and a strength that's really complete like it's not just your butt that lifts you up here but it's ideally all the way you know all the neck muscles all the back muscles So it's even, it's balance, it's training the back body as a whole. You can stay lifted like that or start to curl your butt down towards the mat. Grounding the arms a little heavier to keep the chest lifted. Just watch out for like this like crunching tightness as you do this. It's like, yeah, things are going to intensify. But if you can make it softer, if you can make the spine feel like it's more connected and working a little more evenly, that will be, that will be better. When you rest, some windshield wipers, some gentle movements. And then another back bend. It can be the low bridge. It can go all the way up for the high bridge or Urdhva Dhanurasana wheel pose.
good, John, yeah. And between rounds, some windshield wipers are, again, it's a pose that should be very gentle. It's more, it's also helping to keep the nervous system a little calmer, the body more at ease. And then separate your feet. Let's go as wide as your mat for windshield wipers to the right. So knees, feet wide, knees roll to the right. And then right foot can press down on that left knee. Good, and then bring the knees back up and all the way over to the left. Left foot on top of right knee, a little stretch through those limbs. And then bring your knees back up. So feet on the ground, cross your right ankle on your left knee. And then keeping the left leg bent, roll it and grab your chin or your ankle. So you're pulling the leg in closer towards you with your arms, but push the leg out. So you're using some leg muscles to actually steer that right hip into external rotation. So you go in a little bit and you fire it away. So the arms have to work hard to hang on because your legs are strong. Your legs will, you know, by far overpower your arms. And the idea is as you steer that right knee out, can you keep it there? Can you kind of relax and hold it? So you're muscularly moving into that flexible position. You're active in that external rotation. Good. Switch the legs, left ankle on top of right knee. And then either grab, I mean you can grab low, you can grab high. You'll get more pull, you'll get more pressure if you hold just below your knee like this. And fire up the left foot so that the left foot is active, that'll help you to stabilize your knee too. So that's left foot active, toes spread, and then you steer the knee away. You, you carve that hip into more external rotation. You can try to pull your arms in deeper as you keep the hip there, that left hip. Good, and then release the legs to the floor. Cross your right knee over your left knee, so you're cinching your knees in tight like that. You can cross the ankles if that's not annoying to your knee. But then lift your legs up, right? So you're taking your legs to the left. You can put your left hand on your thigh gently. You, so you can do two things. You can pull it like gently, encourage the legs a little heavier to the floor, or 
left hand to your out the top hip and thigh area and press the thigh and the hip away from your torso, kind of down towards the, the, your feet area direction. And then come back up to center. So switch the cross in your leg, left leg on top, and the legs go to the right. So inviting the knees down toward the floor or grabbing kind of the outer hip or thigh bone and giving a little adjustment. And then back up to center. Bring your knees in, give your legs a hug. You can rock on your back a little bit. And then happy baby holding the feet. Pulling your knees down towards the mat. And then releasing your legs all the way to stretch to Shavasana or to any meditation position if you prefer sitting up. Take your time to get comfortable to get positioned. So legs wide enough. You can wiggle your shoulder blades underneath your back. They move a little closer so you get more lift through your chest. And then arms wide as you Relax as you surrender heavy to the floor. As you start to settle, you can pay attention to your breathing as a dharna or as a focus. And imagine that each breath, each inhale you take is filling up the back and the sides of your waist just as much as your front body. And it's nourishing all of you, all of the parts that we tend to not think about quite as often.
Begin to deepen your breath. Taking your time to stretch, to move. To notice how you feel. Bending your knees and roll to your right side. You can even pause there for a moment. And then all the way up to a seated position. Bring your hands together in front of your heart and make it a gesture of offering. It always is. And I'll say often that it's your heart being held in front of your heart. And that's the twofold, that it's an acknowledgement to yourself. It's, an, it's an, a recognition of your greatness, of your gifts, but also your limitations. And that you make that offering of you and you back out to the world. And it really, like, one of these important elements is to really receive ourselves, to treat ourselves, to see ourselves as that great being that we are. Not without our imperfections, not without our work, but for all that we have to offer. And hopefully through practices like this, we can do that work, we can affirm ourselves, we can recognize our hearts and be that more skillful, more clear component of our world. Take a nice deep full breath in and to your great heart you can bow. Namaste. Thank you guys.